Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Hope you're having a great day. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Low Pro Quad Guard BPX2, whether or not I think it's a wise purchase to make, how I feel about it, what gear I keep inside of it, and all the details. Without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, guys, my name is Brian, and this is the Quad, Car, quad Guard BPX2. Um, on the exterior of the bag, we have two different slots that I keep this tapestry in. A water bottle in, always go with the water bottle. Underneath, we have a pouch for the rain cover for when you're out in those uh, tough winter months. And you can uh, strap one to two quads on the front. Um, really, it's only meant for one, but these straps are movable. And you can just strap one out there. I typically don't do that. Um, let's go ahead and jump inside. So the pod guard, when you open it up, it opens from the back side, as you've probably seen in many videos. Um, and I'm going to open it to where it's facing you guys the way I would open it from that side. So up in the top, we have the zipper pouch. You can probably keep pins or a little Phillips screwdrivers and stuff. I don't have anything other than a freshener in here. Um, here I have some M1 through M3 drivers, a couple um, Phillips screwdrivers, and then we get to some goods inside of here. So when we open up this pouch, we have a toothbrush holder, and inside this toothbrush holder is a TS-100. Um, it's great to have one on the field. I power it up with a 5S pack, so we'll set this to the side. This little bag, I just keep some solder, a little bit of flux mixed in there, and the um, LiPo connector for the TS-100. Put this up to the side so you guys can see it better. Um, I keep a couple of these little sets. Um, Little Allen key sets that come with like mine and fly. It's kind of handy to do your cameras, and um, uh, it's just handy because it covers all the spectrum of sizes. And what else we got here? A couple lens cap protectors. Um, so, a little tip I'll give you guys if you're new to this or whatever. Um, when you're out in the field and you have your quad on your bag or you're walking with it, always point your cameras down, face your quad down like mounted on here down. I made the mistake of having one of my quads with the cameras mounted up and with the up tilt it caused it to face right into the sun. Burnt the camera lens. All you see is purple right in the middle of the whole thing so I had to replace the camera. So now I keep a couple lens cam protectors with me just in case I'm out in the field for a lengthy period of time. Um, I can keep them on there to protect them. So we'll dive back in. That's about all I keep in that compartment. Um, I only have like a half hour to 45 minutes to fly at a time, so I only keep four to five packs with me at a time. So I don't use the battery bag for batteries, actually. I go ahead and I keep all my props in here. So I've got a bunch of uh, some Cyclones and um, HQs in here. It's kind of handy for that if you don't want to use it for battery stuff. An extra GoPro mount that has no up tilt, that way it's universal. I can put some sponge underneath it or whatever in a pinch so I get some footage. Um, I've just started doing that, as you guys see on the channel, like the past three weeks or so. It's been fun. Um, this is kind of disorganized because this is my like third take on this video. I had all kinds of issues. But um, I keep a ride along watch, which is really handy to share with spectators or if my uh, fiance and kids come out with me. My brother comes to visit, they can throw this on their um, hand. And it's also great for doing like main line of sight tests because you can have this on your wrist and if anything gets a little sketchy or you get out of balance a little bit, you can take a quick look and get yourself out of trouble. You know, just get up on the throttle, put it up high, and then you can get reorientated. So having a little thing like this is handy. I got this on a flash sale for like 20 bucks. Um, I know they normally go for around 40, but it's really handy. It holds a pretty good charge. You know, you're not getting great range or anything, but it's just for flying around a park or around the field or something. It's pretty great for spectators. Um, it's a little screen, five inch screen. Um, I used to in the past, when I, before I got fat sharks and stuff, I would hook this up to my transmitter when I was first getting into this hobby. And I just kind of kept this as another ride along option if people just want to view it from afar, you know, because um, they can't really jump in the fat sharks with us, you know. So it's handy to have like something like this on the side. Um, anyways, it is what it is. Um, Extra fat shark battery, always handy. Electrical tape, some extra little battery straps for micros. I throw micros right in the top here sometimes when I'm flying. 3M double sided tape, very handy for when receivers start coming loose, you gotta do an emergency job. I typically use this in the house that I'm actually working on them or attempting to do a build. Um, but I keep it with me here so I know where it is at all times. 
Um, it's all in those two spots. Sunglasses, I'm in California, just gotta have shades. It gets hot here. Um, like I said, I only keep three or four packs on me at a time. So we've got, uh, I use Tattoo our lines and we've got a couple 4S packs. Let me drop them back in. A couple 5S packs from Applied the Elegant. Um, I found these dividers on eBay. It's for like Polaris cameras. And the reason I had to go that route um, is because Low Pro does not offer separate dividers for these. So these are actually fitted to be the same size because I, I thought I had initially lost one of these in the early goings. But it turns out I didn't. I just had it um, confused. And so I ended up getting an extra set of them. They work, whatever, they're sitting here. I uh, just keep them in the back because I don't want to lose them. I'll, I'll put them somewhere and I'll forget I even had them. So we move on. Anything else in there? A couple stick guards for the radio. I'm not really using those because I don't need to anymore. Um, this is handy. My fiance bought me this quite a while ago when I first got in this hobby uh, off Amazon. So a little over a year ago or so. And these things handy. It's got the little rubber things in it for your motor so you don't hurt the bells. And this uh, pop nut remover is just perfect. I and mean, I've never had a slip or anything like that. So this is kind of pricey, I'm sure. She got it for me for a gift. And uh, yeah, I love them. I do use them all the time. I keep them in pristine shape. I keep them in this bag. And this thing's been used at least 500 times already. No joke. So then we move on to the main guts. And here we have a GFRC Mark II. That's sitting in this pouch. And this just comes right out. Um, it's just really handy. This isn't as bad as it looks. It just slides like that, comes right out. This is to protect your gear inside. The quad's very secure. I can fit it in here with a GoPro. It does get a little tight on your back when this part's resting up against your back. But, you know, I saw a couple of recent videos, like from Joshua Bardwell and stuff, that he switched to some new bag because he didn't really like how the, you couldn't fit one of these quads in here with a GoPro. And I, I fit a GoPro in all the time. I usually have the camera in the slot. I just took it out because um, I put on the charger and stuff. So normally the GoPro's on and everything. I throw it in the bag. I haven't had an issue. And when I say I haven't had an issue is I'm using a much larger, ra larger radio as well. This is the uh, Horus X10S. That's the radio I keep in here. It's my favorite radio. I do have the uh, QX7 and X9D. I'll be doing like a review video on those videos compared with like Devo 7, which I also got. That was with the first quad that ever got me into this hobby, which was a Walker F215. But I'm going to do a little comparison on all these radios. Love this radio right here. Um, other than it can't do the crossfire protocol natively, so you don't get that low latency thing. But other than that, this is a great radio. It fits right in here. I have no issues. I'm going to plop it right back. In here, I have some of my goggle antennas, just an assorted mix. Got some lollipops, little pagodas. Um, this is for that little screen I was showing you earlier, just some hunky dunk, um, little menace bandy cat, uh, all kinds of stuff. Just little things I've collected that are just miscellaneous, different DB ratings on those. Um, one patch is for um, linear, the other patch I have on the goggles is for your regular um, antenna that comes off the back, like cloverleaf. And that's what this one's for here now. I've got that on the Fat Sharks, these are Fat Shark HD2s. Um, I only see out of one eye and my vision, and that's pretty poor as well. So the 50 degrees field of view really helps me out a lot. Um, and I keep a patch and an Omni on there. And yeah, these work out well. They fit right up top here. They fit snug. Goggles just go in like that. Put the patch down, one way or the other. Yeah, that's it. And it, it's a nice little snug fit. All this stuff goes back in. And now let's talk about you know how I feel about this bag and whether or not I recommend it to you and if it's worth your money. Um, my thoughts on it are this is one of the, the best buying decisions I've made since I've gotten this hobby. I got this on a flash sale for 99 bucks. It's normally like 149, and I, I'd say it's probably about the best hundred bucks I've spent in this hobby. Seriously, um, that's that's even considering the fat sharks and having a nice radio. This is right along there with it. Prior to this, I was using like a JanSport backpack, and um, I throw the quad on the outside, just kind of rinky dick it with the straps, you know. And it's still, it was cool. It did its job, you know. I was getting by, but from the moment I've got this bag, I've kind of felt different, you know. Like you just kind of, you feel like you kind of gained some respect, and you, you, you feel like you're, you're, you're moving up, you know. I guess the best way to put it is, since I've owned this bag, I really felt like I've been all in, you know. Like now I'm all in into FVV. And before it, I was half-assing it. 
So for that alone, I really recommend it. The other reasons too, is your gear is isolated in one spot. I like to keep things kind of compartmentalized. So I have everything I need with me, not just some of it, but everything that I need to go out on the field and actually get the job done, go out and have a good time. That's what it's all about, it's having a good time. And I don't wanna to have to remember to grab my antennas from the off the desk here and remember to grab this off the charger over there. No, I can get it all ready the night before. It all goes in the bag, I'm good to go. And the only thing I usually end up having to do if I don't have any major crashes, take the batteries out, you know, throw them in. Um, hey, there's one thing in here I'm missing. That's the, uh, never leave a field without one of these. Got to have a lipo checker. Always have a lipo checker. It made me think of that. So that was squeezed in the bag too. This is really handy when you're just unsure. You know you used one pack and the other three are charged. You know, we've all been in that situation. It really just takes the guesswork out of it. So definitely have a lipo checker with you. But um, I, I love this bag. I think it's a great purchase. Um, you know, you think about a backpack costing 50, 60 bucks. So, and if you pay full price for this, it's 150. Save up for it. It is three times as much as a backpack, but I think you're getting more than three times what you get out of a backpack. For the convenience, for it being very durable, I have not had a single issue with it in 10 months, and for, for it to fulfill everything. I mean, you can easily fit three or four micros with you, a full-size quad inside, one on the outside, your radio, your goggles, some ride-along equipment, your drivers, your screwdrivers, and all your little tapes and this and that, your soldering, your soldering gun, it all fits in here. So even if you gotta do some quick repairs and stuff, no longer you're going out to your garage or workbench looking for this and that, just go to your bag, it's all here. So I recommend it, I love it. You know, hey, if you don't have one, been there, man. I spent many months when I first got into it just using whatever I could. I've walked out to the field with nothing. Just batteries in one hand, radio in the other, and the goggles strapped on my head. No shit. Just walk to the field like that, like 10 minutes. People looking at me, I don't care. Whatever, I'm just doing my thing. But since I've had this bag, I don't know, it just, it adds a new element. And when people see out of the park and out in the flying field, and they see us setting up, they know you mean business. You're not going to get interrupted as much. They're not going to question your piloting abilities. They're going to think you're like some pro guy. You know, I'm, I'm no pro guy, but... You know, they kind of look at you like that, like, wow, this guy's invested. He, he's in it. You know, he, he means business. So I get left alone a lot more, which I kind of like. Um, hey, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to be coming out with some other ones, too, doing a comparison like box goggles versus fat sharks and why I think you should own a pair of both, seriously. Um, a radio comparison I mentioned. I'm going to be doing a video on how to set up a drone wall. I just did that last week in my office, and it turned out pretty good. So I'll do a walkthrough on that. Um, I've got some little... Um, tutorial videos I want to do too. I came up with a new way of like having air mode without having air mode. I don't know, some cool stuff coming up. So hope you guys enjoy the content. Most of the videos will be flight footage like I'm doing 90% of the time. So this is just once in a while. But um, man, thanks for supporting me. I'm happy to support your guys' channel. Leave some comments down below. I appreciate our interaction and I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, have a good one.